Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss inductance and permeability. These two concepts are interrelated and they make regular appearance in electromagnetics and power system studies. Before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part 3 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of electrical properties. In this lecture, we are going to discuss magnetic permeability and inductance. Learning objectives of this lecture include understanding magnetic permeability and inductance, which are two very closely related concepts. And within inductance, we will look at factors that impact inductance, series and parallel arrangement of inductors, and energy storage capacity of inductors. Magnetic permeability. Magnetic permeability is the measure of a material's ability to allow formation of magnetic flux within itself, which basically allows it to store energy in the form of magnetic field, similar to electrical permittivity, which was the ability of a material to store energy in the form of electrical field. Mathematical equation for magnetic permeability is H is equal to B divided by mu, which is equal to I divided by 2 pi R, and this is Ampere's law. Now there are a few important parameters that we need to understand in this equation. I will explain them step by step. First of all, we have mu. Okay, mu is a magnetic permeability and much like epsilon, it is comprised of mu r and mu naught. Okay, in our case, epsilon naught was a permittivity of free space, okay? And in this case, we have mu naught, which is permeability of free space. And just like epsilon naught, it is also a constant. And this constant is four pi by 10 raised to the power minus seven Henry per meter. And mu r is a relative permeability. It is a material constant, okay? And it varies from one material to another material. I over here is actually the distance in a wire. So the setup for Ampere's law is that you have a vertical wire, which is carrying current I in a given direction. And then you are calculating, so you are calculating either B or H at a distance R from it. Okay, so that's basically the setup for Ampere's law. So R is the distance from the wire and H is the magnetic field strength. Okay, and the unit for H is a divided by m, where a is amperes and m is meter. Okay, so the distance, so this is r, this distance is in meters, and b is a magnetic flux density which is given in T, which is Tesla. Let us now solve a practice problem involving magnetic permeability. So we are being asked to calculate magnetic permeability of a medium in which we have an infinitely long wire, and this wire is carrying current of 100 amps. So this is the first value that is provided to us. So you should jump on it and identify as I. And then we have, it is producing 0.5 Tesla. So your B is 0.5 Tesla magnetic field at a distance of 50 centimeter perpendicular from the wire. Okay, so this is your R. So you're given I, you're given B, and you're given R and you're being asked to calculate magnetic permeability. So you can list all the equations that you know. So we have H is equal to B divided by mu, which is equal to I divided by two pi R. So if you rearrange this equation, you basically find that your magnetic permeability as a function of B, R, and I, which are the three quantities that are provided to you, it takes the form of two pi R times B divided by I. So according to the problem statement, we have I, which is equal to 100 amps, B is 0.5 Tesla, and R is equal to 50 centimeter. Be careful with the unit of measurement over here. So 50 centimeter is equal to 0.50 meters. And when you substitute these values, you'll find that your magnetic permeability turns out to be 0.015 Henry per meter. Inductance. Inductance is the ability of a conductor to produce electromotive force when current changes through it. 
we'll see that inductance is actually closely related to magnetic permeability. System International Unit for inductance is Henry and it is denoted by H. Mathematical equations for inductance include L equal to N square times mu, which is the magnetic permeability, times A divided by L. Now, this L, capital L, is the inductance, okay? And N is the number of turns in a coil. So if you have a coil like this, then the number of turns in the coil will actually be equal to N. Mu is the magnetic permeability. As I mentioned, you can see that inductance and magnetic permeability are related by this equation. A is the cross-section area of this coil. So this is A. And in the second equation, so sorry, in the first equation, we still have L, which is the length of the coil. Okay, so this is the length of the coil. And in the second equation, your inductance is related to the number of turns, N, and magnetic flux that is passing through the coil, and I, where I is the current that is passing through the coil. Factors impacting inductance. So based on these two equations, we can very clearly identify how which factors impact inductance and how it is related to those factors. It can be seen from the first equation that inductance L is directly proportional to the number of turns, okay? And it is also proportional to the magnetic permeability. It is also proportional to the area of the coil, the cross-section area of the coil, because all of these quantities actually appear in the numerator. And in terms of direct proportionality from the second equation, you can see that it is also directly proportional to the magnetic flux, phi. And it is inversely proportional to the length of the coil because it appears in the denominator. And it is also inversely proportional to the current passing through the coil because I also appears in the denominator. Let us now take a look at a practice problem from the study guide involving inductance and magnetic permeability. So we are being asked to calculate the inductance of a one meter long coil, which has 100 turns and the cross section area is 0.1 meter square. So the magnetic permeability mu is equal to four pi multiplied by 10 raised to power minus seven Henry per meter. And you can identify that this is the magnetic permeability of free space. So we have to calculate inductance. Now we have two equations for inductance. One of the equation relates inductance with its length, its area, and the other one relates inductance with uh, the flux and the current. So in this case, we are given magnetic permeability, which actually shows up in the first equation. So we'll see how we can make use of these equations. So this is the first equation. L is equal to N squared times mu times A divided by L. So we have N, which is 100. We have area, which is 0 0.1 meter square. We have mu, which is 4 pi by 10 raised to the power minus 7. And we have L, which is 1 meter. So basically, this equation will do the work for us. We don't need to consider the second equation. We will simply substitute the given quantities. And when you calculate the value of L, it turns out to be 1.25 millihenry. Inductors in series and parallel. So in the last lecture, we looked at capacitors in series and parallel. And when inductors are arranged in series, they act like resistors in series. So you can simply see that the inductances will simply add up. And when inductors are arranged in parallel, then they will act like resistors in parallel. And the resulting inductance in parallel will be given by this type of equation. So in summary, inductors in series add like resistors in series and inductors in parallel act like resistors in parallel. So resistors and inductors act the same way, whereas the capacitor is the outlier. So capacitor in series act like resistors and inductors in parallel, and capacitors in parallel act like resistors and inductors in series. As I mentioned, inductors are basically used for storing energy in the form of magnetic field. Okay, and that's where magnetic permeability comes into play. Now, energy storage capacity of an inductor is given by this equation, which says that energy storage is equal to L times I square divided by two, 
where I is the current that is passing through the inductor and L is the inductance. It is clear that we can increase the energy storage capacity of an inductor by increasing L or increasing I. Now, once you've basically designed a particular inductor, then changing the inductance is sort of difficult, whereas changing the amount of current that is passing through the inductor is much more easier. So it is a controllable variable. So we can increase the current, and by increasing the current, we can increase the energy storage capacity of an inductor. So energy storage ability can be increased by increasing inductance, or by increasing the current, or by increasing both. So in this lecture, we learned about magnetic permeability and inductance. Both of these concepts are interrelated and they are concerned with the property of electrical materials to be able to hold the magnetic field or contain the magnetic field. Then we looked at the mathematical equations related to inductance and magnetic permeability. We looked at the factors that influence inductance, namely the number of turns on the coil, the magnetic permeability, the area of the cross section, the length of the coil, the flux that is flowing through it or contained in it and the current that is going through it. Series and parallel arrangement of inductors was also reviewed. Inductors behave like resistors basically when they are in parallel and when they are in series. This is not true for capacitors because capacitors in series act like resistors in parallel and capacitors in parallel act like resistors and inductors in series. We also looked at the equation that defines the energy storage capacity of inductors. We saw how the amount of current that flows through it impacts the energy storage capacity exponentially. Now you can increase the inductance of the material and it will be able to hold more energy in the form of a magnetic field, but essentially the current that flows through it has a greater impact. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES FE Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I've also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 